family in Jesus. This morning we are carrying on in uh, the book of Acts <clears throat> from chapter 19. If you have your Bibles with you and you want to follow. Um, this chapter 19, this part of Paul's uh, mission trip is one of my favorite. It is one of the most powerful pieces, uh, one of the most powerful uh, mission trips that he took. And uh, we're going to see how the, the Holy Spirit not only helped and saved him, but three other disciples that went with him. So if you've got your Bibles this morning, um, we're going to be reading out of Acts chapter 19 from verse 1. The Bible says, while Apollos uh, was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? This was a, this was a huge thing uh, for not only Paul, but for the apostles as well. Because it, it's the Holy Spirit that um, guides us and leads us and teaches us and reminds us of every word that Jesus said. Uh, with the Holy Spirit, we have the gifts and the, uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit... Um, we are just confessing Christians and, and um, then we can't um, perform the, the uh, gifts and the talents and uh, the miracles that the Lord wants to do in and through us. So that's why Paul is asking here, did you receive the Holy Spirit when, when you believed? The Bible goes on and says, they answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked. Um, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. So just uh, the same as Apollos, uh, they only heard of John the Baptist and about the, the baptism of John. Uh, so now Paul is starting to meet more and more and more believers in that area that has only heard of, of that baptism. So this opens a total new door for him and, and his ministry. Uh, verse 4, the Bible says, Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after them, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, uh, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, uh, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. They were about... 12 men in all. So here, for these 12 new disciples that Paul has just met now, a whole new part of their ministry and their calling has just been opened and unlocked. Um, and, and, and you can just imagine the excitement that is, is now in them. So verse 8, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke. This is in, in uh, Ephesus. Paul uh, entered the synagogue and spo spoke boldly there for three months arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. Persuasively, meaning that uh, whoever he was uh, debating or speaking against, Paul was always winning, um, if, he, if he uses the, the word here, persuasively. Then verse 9, but some of them became uh, obstinate. Uh, they refused to believe and uh, uh, publicly humiliated the way. So uh, there were some of them that said, look, we... Uh, we don't want to go down this road. We don't want to, to believe what you are telling us. It's not in the scriptures. And, and they were sticking to the Old Testament Torah. Uh, the Bible goes on. So Paul left them. So Paul left them. This is a, an important teaching that, that Paul gives in uh, the New Testament as well. If Jesus also said it, if someone doesn't want your peace, um, turn around, walk away from them. Dust the, the dust off your, your shoes. Walk away. Uh, don't waste your time. Don't throw your pearls to the swine. Just turn around and walk away. Um, it, it, it doesn't uh, benefit God's kingdom or you in your ministry to spoon feed someone for, for a year, two years, sometimes five years, and they've already decided they don't want to move uh, forward. They don't want your peace. They don't want the peace of, of um, the, the gospel. Just move on. So the Bible says here, um, Paul then left them. Um, he took his disciples with him. Um, 
and, and, and daily had lectures. Verse 10. This went on for two years. So he took those 12 disciples uh, with him that he had just blessed uh, with the uh, power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He took them with him so that they will not be corrupted by uh, those Jews that decided they didn't want to believe. Um, took them with for, for two years um, so that all the Jews and the Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. So they went through all that, 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 that whole province of, of Asia spreading uh, the, the gospel for two years together with those new disciples. Verse 11, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even um, handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and evil spirits left them. So now this is, is one of the second places in the word of God that we read about the handkerchief that touched Paul um, and, and that was placed on, on the sick or on uh, someone that was possessed with uh, de demons or evil spirits and they were cured immediately. Verse 13, some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say in the name of um, of the Jesus who Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons um, of Sheba, a Jewish um, chief priest, were doing this. Verse 15, one day the evil spirits answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about, but who are you? So here they were doing it to... Um, benefit themselves. So Paul wasn't doing it to benefit himself. He was doing it to give the glory to, to Jesus and to build God's kingdom. And the Lord knows our, our hearts and, and, and the enemy knows um, who he can approach and who he can't approach. He knows by our, our deeds. He, he knows by the way that we speak, by the way that we act and react. Um, so here, this, this is what is, is happening now. Verse 16. Then the man who had an evil spirit jumped up on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So here we can see that um, if they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were doing it with the right motive, because the Lord looks at the motive of our hearts. If they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were doing it with the right, right motive, that man would not have been able to, to touch them um, through the, the power that, that uh, evil spirit in, in them. Uh, verse 17. When this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were um, all uh, seized with fear. And the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Here, the Jews and the Greeks then saw that they mustn't play uh, around with the the, the name of the Lord. They mustn't blaspheme. They, they mustn't use it for their own gain. Uh, verse 18. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed um, what they had done. A number, uh, a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. Isn't that one of the first things that the Holy Spirit led us to do when we came to salvation? is one of the first things is to take all of your worldly music and, and to, to go and have a barbecue, go and burn it. And to take all of the evil posters, if you if you are still young or, or you were a teenager when you came to salvation, all of those uh, ungodly demonic posters that were, was hanging up in, in your room, to pull that all down and go and have a barbecue, go and burn it. This is what is happening here. Um, burn them publicly. Uh, when they calculated the value of the scrolls, the uh, total came to 50,000 drachmas. That is, that is a huge amount of, uh, uh, of, of money there. That, that is uh, equivalent of a rich man's salary for an entire year. Uh, so it was a, a, a lot of money that they burnt there. Verse 20. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely 
and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia. After I had been there, he said, I must visit Rome as well. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and um, Erastus, to Macedonia while he stayed in the province of Asia a little bit longer. So here we can, we can see uh, again a, a cycle that is happening. Uh, persecution uh, started in, in his uh, mission trip. And here we can now see that the Lord is blessing Paul, not only with um, new believers, but also with new followers. So he's, he's gained 12 new disciples now that are traveling with him. He's teaching them, he's guiding them, he's, uh, he's educating them in, in uh, how to uh, work and, and function in the ministry. Uh, and, and the Lord is blessing him with a season of peace now, where he can gather souls. He's gone into a new uh, area, into Asia, and, and he's, he's busy gathering souls there. And uh, if you know the, the uh, life of Paul, you will know that that is one of the, the provinces um, that, uh, or, or the, the, um, the areas in his ministry that he always wanted to focus on was in, in Asia. So he always wanted to go to the continent of, of Asia and go and minister there. And the Lord has taken him in there, not alone. He's taken him in with 12 disciples and, and blessed him with so, so much power of the Holy Spirit that um, handkerchiefs and aprons that touch him were sent out to the, the sick. So here we can see uh, what is happening in, in the, the ministry and the life of Paul. The next piece that, that we are going to read is one of my favorite pieces in, in the Word of God. The power of what the Lord did in that man's life and through um, other disciples that went with him is absolutely godly and amazing. But we'll get into that uh, tomorrow. For now, please just join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for um, a brand new beginning, Lord. We thank you for a second chance. Thank you that we have breath in our lungs and thank you that our hearts are beating. We have blood flowing through our veins, Lord, and that is all because you will it to be that way, Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you that through the encouragement and the motivation and the voice of your Holy Spirit. We know, Lord, that this morning we were permitted and allowed to open our eyes because our work for you and your kingdom is not done yet, Lord. And even though we are longing for the second coming of Jesus, longing for that day that that trumpet will sound and Jesus will return, we, we know, Lord, that while that hasn't happened yet, there is still things that need to be done for you and your kingdom. And we thank you for that, Father God. Lord, we pray that in this day, we will be obedient to your word and to your Holy Spirit, that we will be um, open to be led by your word and your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that, Father God. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with and given us, entrusted us with, Lord Jesus, made us stewards of. And we thank you for that, and we pray. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, family in Jesus. I hope that you have a blessed day today. I hope that it will be a godly day. I hope that uh, you draw closer to the Lord and that you have uh, time this, this morning to uh, spend in the Word. Get deeper into the Word. Um, read more about your King. If there are some of you that have started in Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, um, continue in that. Um, get into the, the teachings of Jesus. Until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.